At the very beginning of this course, I talked a little bit about the importance of communication, not just from the perspective of transferring information, but from the perspective that human beings have this very deep inbuilt need to be part of a group, to be respected by others, to have their achievements um, respected by others, acknowledged by others. And communication is a critical part of this whole process. This week is a little bit of a reminder with regard to that. We're talking about interpersonal communications, um, and although we're talking about that within organizations, we have to remember that most of our waking adult lives are actually spent in some aspect in the workplace. So interpersonal communications is a critical part of our lives, and most of that time we are actually at work communicating with other colleagues. To some extent we looked at the importance of this when we were talking about networking. But from that perspective we were looking at increasing the efficiency of our working lives as a function of generating communication channels outside of those that were prescribed. In the interpersonal communications we're talking about now, we're talking really about fulfilling the vital role that interpersonal communications plays on us as functioning human beings. This is not necessarily related to the efficiency of our workplace environment with regard to obtaining or using information. This is about a much deeper uh, uh, personal need that human beings have. And you will recall, I hope, the um, story I told you of uh, British Telecom and the problems they had initially when they started transferring um, some of their directory information services to rural Ireland. Um, and this is really the kind of things that we're looking at from this perspective. Now, very much related to this is a discussion also about the efficiency of leadership, because leadership and communications are intimately related. Sure, there are good leaders that do not have particularly good communication skills, and if they recognize that, they might make, that, make up for that by other techniques. For instance, having um, upper management at their side to essentially be their mouthpiece. But all this is pretty unusual. Um, if you're not uh, an, an entrepreneur actually creating your own business environment, in other words, if you are uh, climbing a, a, a management ladder in an organization, then communi interpersonal communication skills are absolutely vital. So uh, some of the slides that follow are a reminder of the kinds of things that contribute to effective interpersonal skills. Now, although we're talking about interpersonal communication as a social process, often this is combined with the transfer of information. Sometimes this might be information regarding our, our social lives, or it might be information regarding work. But the fact is there will be two aspects to the communication. One will be the information contained within it, and the other will be the social aspect of the communication, in other words, the interpersonal function. And I just want you to recall that we have got this aspect about ourselves that we generate a personal image with regard to how the receiver of our information will feed back to us. So we might say something to somebody and when they make a reply to us, there are two aspects to this. One will be do they in fact agree with the information that we gave them? In other words, if we voiced an opinion or we talked a little bit about uh, something that's going to go on or something within the work environment. And we will be listening to hear if they agree with that or not. 
However, sometimes they might agree with that, but they don't agree with the way that we transmitted that information. And it may be subtle, or it may be um, very obvious to us what that is. So if we were in an environment where we had to tell um, import employees or colleagues about some other negative aspect of the organization, perhaps there are some changes that uh, we, we really know are not going to be received terribly well, but it is our job to communicate them. Then we have to be particularly careful with regard to how we do it. And there will be aspects of this where people will disagree with the decisions made. I mean, the information will be there and it will be um, for everybody to see. But people will not be comfortable with the, the content. What we don't want them to do, of course, is to be uncomfortable also with the way that it was transmitted to them. So under those circumstances, we have to be particularly careful about the techniques we use to trans transmit that information. Every aspect of communication within organizations can benefit from good interpersonal communication skills. We're not just talking about uh, keeping the smooth running of a department, say. We're also talking about, for instance, innovation. If you have a good idea about how the department might benefit from certain changes or something of that nature, then your interpersonal skills will be the things that dictate whether or not that idea is adopted. You have to convince certain stakeholders with regard to the power of the idea, for instance. Next week, we're going to be talking about persuasion. And in some senses, that takes the ideas behind interpersonal communications and expands on them. Whether you're talking about mass persuasion in the sense of uh, a political um, a p political persuasion. We, we, we're in, in the aftermath here of, of a, uh, an election, and uh, we were all subjected to vast amounts of persuasion attempts um, by all parties involved. And that requires certain skills. People spend enormous amounts of money and effort agonizing over the best ways to do that. And in essence, those ideas are just scaled-up versions of the kinds of things that we might have to do if we want to get um, certain ideas across to other people in our everyday lives. We are all creatures of prejudice, and it is naive to think that we're not. We're all born in certain conditions with certain influences that gives us biases. And the issue about prejudice, of course, is when biases become um, distorted. We can have a bias against people that are going to do us harm, um, and that's not really an unreasonable thing to do. So that's hardly a prejudice. However, when we confuse people that are not going to do us harm, with those that we think could do us harm, then we start stepping into the realm of stereotyping and prejudice. So we all have prejudices, and we have to wake up in the morning and realize that that is the case. The issue is whether or not we know ourselves well enough to be able to deal with those prejudices. And if we don't, then our interpersonal skills um, are going to suffer as a result of that. They can suffer through uh, stereotyping, we just talked about. They can suffer the other way, through the halo effect, positive judgment of someone's character, um, which influences our overall impression. In other words, we judge somebody to be perhaps of a certain social class um, or um, a certain ethnic background, and that influences us in a positive way. Um, since, uh, although I happen to be American, although I'm perceived initially by people as being English, there are certain quite positive assumptions that people make about me some from time to time that uh, are really totally uh, unreasonable. In other words, they don't know me well enough to be able to say, oh, he's English, therefore he's trustworthy, or 
he's English and with a, with a voice like that he's bound to be intelligent. These are things that people really don't have the right to make assumptions with. So as well as the negative aspects of, um, of, of bias, uh, there are also positive uh, aspects of bias. The rest of the slides this week are really just little reminders of the ways in which we can hone our interpersonal communication skills. And I'm sure you've probably already come across uh, all of these things in the course of management development classes and that kind of thing.